right. We are now recording Ms. Murdoch's lecture on three beakers and osmosis. All right. So this is an osmosis study. This is, these are the details of osmosis, which is the next process for that, that we're looking at. And osmosis by definition, right, osmosis by definition is the movement of water from high to low concentrations. And usually, this is across a membrane. All right, so remember that this it's really the same definition as diffusion. It's just very specific to water. So the way I like to the way I like to talk about this is I like to have something to draw on. So if you want to draw this with me along with me, that's great. Or if you just want to sit and listen and watch, um, I will be um, Miss. saving this picture. Um, Miss, so we can't see your screen. You can't see the screen? Yes, glitch sometimes. It turns to green. Yeah. But it's there now. Uh, okay. Right now, it's, there's mm -hmm. nothing. But a few, few seconds ago, there were, your screen was all green. Uh huh. It happened like three, four times. All right. Well, I I'm afraid that there's nothing I can do about that. Um, it was doing that for the AP Biology um, the other day as well. But hopefully, it will be there enough that you'll be able to see um, in between the glitches what I'm doing. Okay, I apologize. Um, Blackboard Collaborate uh, doesn't seem to, to like this platform, but it's a good platform anyway. So I'm gonna keep going, okay? Okay, so let's pretend we've got three beakers. I'm gonna try as best I can to make them the same size. One, two, three glass beakers, and each, in each one of them. Again. Okay, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. Just, just keep watching. Come back, okay. Yeah, Yusuf, you're just gonna have to keep watching, buddy, because we can't do anything on our end. And then, as it glitches in and out, we'll figure it out. Sorry, buddy. Okay. All right. We got three beakers. There's water in each beaker. Okay. In each beaker, we're going to have a giant red blood cell. You're going to have to pretend with me that red blood cells really are this big. We know they're not, but we're just doing the size difference so you can see what's going on inside and outside of cells. All right. So in each one of these beakers, what you have to understand is there's not one solution of water. There are two solutions in each beaker. There is a solution out here where I'm drawing my line and there's a solution inside the cell which consists of the cell cytoplasm and each solution might have a different amount of solvents or solutes dissolved in the solution making the concentration inside the cell sometimes different from the concentration outside of the cell. It's those differences in concentration that drive movement. In this particular example, we're going to pretend that the membrane, this membrane here that I've drawn around the red blood cell, that the only thing that the membrane is allowing through is water. That it's not permeable to the sugar that I'm going to put into the water. Okay, so let's say, for example, that in this particular beaker, this beaker number one, the solution outside the cell has, let's say, 0.8 molar sugar. Okay, and inside the cell, it's 0.3 molar sugar. So if we were to represent sugar molecules out here, let's say that we make little dots. I'm going to make little dots. And each of those dots is a sugar molecule. So out here, there's a lot of them because 0.8 molar sugar is actually pretty concentrated. So there's a lot of sugar out here. And the white space in between the sugar, you need to understand, is water, right? 
So all those dots are sugar molecules, and the white space between them is the water. Now inside the cell, it's 0.3, so I'm going to put some dots of sugar in there, but it's not nearly as concentrated inside as it is outside. I'm going to go to the middle one, and the inside of the, of the red blood cell is still 0.3 sugar, right? Outside, though, it's also 0.3 molar sugar. So it's exactly the same concentration of sugar outside and inside. So I'm going to draw some more dots again to kind of indicate that it's about the same concentration inside now. There we go. In the last beaker, you still have 0.3 molar sugar on the inside of the cell. And outside, there is no sugar, zero molar. So there's no dots out here, and there's still a few dots in here. Okay. So again, two solutions in each beaker, the one on the inside of the cell, which is a consistent 0.3, and the solution surrounding the cell, the solution that the cell is bathing in, which is different in each beaker. Now we have a name to describe the, the solutions based on their relative concentration to a different solution that they're being compared to. The first solution, this solution right here, the outside one, we describe that solution as being hypertonic. Hyper meaning more. Tonic meaning solutes dissolved. So hypertonic solutions have more solutes in solution. Then the solution they're being compared to, right? Then the solution sorry solution it is compared to. I'll move the screen just a little bit. There we go. It's compared to. Okay. So hypertonic means more. There is more sugar out here than there is inside the cell. Now as a result of that, now remember I said the sugar can't move. So in order for this situation this beaker with a cell in it to reach equilibrium, which way will the water, the water which is the white space between, need to move in order for the solutions on both sides to start to get close to the same concentration? So, chat to me or say out loud because I actually can't see the screen right now. What do you think? Is the water going to move out of the cell or into the cell? It's going to move into the cell. Actually, no. I applaud your trying. Thank you for, for giving it a try. But actually, if you look carefully, if the water moves into the cell, won't that make the cell in the inside of the cell even less concentrated than outside? So if we're trying to move towards equilibrium, the white space, the water, right, is going to move from where it's higher to where it's lower. So let me go back to that screen again. I can't draw on this. Okay, all right. So if you can see my pen, okay. In here, right, inside the cell, all that white space, that water, from the water's point of view, it's more concentrated in here than it is out there. From the sugar's point of view, the sugar is more concentrated out here than it is in there. But only the water can move. So the water is going to move from the inside of the cell to the outside. That's because the water is moving so that equilibrium can be reached. If more water moves out here, it will spread out the dots more, won't it? That these dots out here will get more spread out and the concentration out here will get less because you're adding more water to it. And that, re that allows the system to go towards equilibrium, right? Because every system wants to get the same concentration on both sides of a membrane. It's just simple physics. 
It's the law of diffusion. So if you dunk yourself in the ocean, think of it this way, right? If you walk into seawater, when you go swimming in the ocean, don't you come out feeling dehydrated? You should, right? When you go swimming in the ocean, that the ocean is very salty. It's hypertonic to your cells. So it will draw water out of any cells that are close to the mucus thin membranes of your body, like in your eyes and in your mouth, your lips inside your mouth. Um, those areas are gonna lose water to the ocean. You're gonna get dehydrated swimming in the ocean because you're swimming in a hypertonic solution and osmosis is going out of you. So let me add to that, okay? Water leaves the cell. And very often, this will cause cells to shrink or kind of shrivel up. Will shrink. Okay, so that's the first solution that's hypertonic. Now let's go to the second one. Really quick this, with the question, Ms. Murdoch, sorry. They had yeah. one. I had somebody in the room, so I had a mask on and was trying to deal with that oh. because he was looking at something. Um, Rami said, so there is no sugar in the cell? Yeah, there is. There's 0.3 sugar in the cell. There's 0.3 molar sugar in the cell. See? But, mm -hmm. but that's, less, that's less sugar than there is outside, mm -hmm. right? So by definition, this solution out here is hypertonic. It's 0.8 molar, while the solution inside a cell is only 0.3 molar. So the solution is hypertonic to the inside of the cell. And cells that are dunked in a hypertonic solution are gonna lose water and shrink because the water is gonna move towards where there's more solutes to spread out the dots, to reach equilibrium. Now, are there okay, questions yeah. coming? Yeah, um, yeah, I got another one. So they wanted to make sure, so we're, guys, we are talking about movement of water. The the Larger molecules are going to stay. We're talking about the movement of water, not the solute. The yes. water can move. The sugar cannot. Okay, so Sorry. in this particular situation, these are the rules. Water can move. Sugar cannot. It just depends on the situation that you're presented with. You have to read very carefully or listen very carefully to whatever they tell you about this membrane. In a lot of situations, water moves much faster and more readily across membranes than anything else. So that's osmosis is such a, a very important biological process and why we're talking about it today. And another Are one so they said sugar inside the cell stays while water moved out of the cell. That's it. Yes. These are really great questions. I'm glad that you care so much about these details. Good for you. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one, okay? Yep, no problem. I'm going to go mute again just so you don't hear. And then when they ask a question, I'll go on. Okay. Mute yeah, it. but yeah, help me with those questions because I can't see them where I am. All right. Yeah. So the next speaker, we're talking about this solution out here, which is the same concentration as the as the solution inside the cell. This is called an isotonic solution. Oh, are there questions again? No, they were just saying they called it isotonic. They had a question what that meant. So I was like, give her a second. <laughs> okay, I, I, I promise I'm going to tell you. You just have to let me let me finish. Okay, ISO means same. Okay, ISO means same. So in this case, you have the same. Ah, the same amount of solutes. on both sides. Of the membrane. Right. Okay, 
So now which way do you think the water will move? Remember, the sugar can't move. Will the water move? Uh, oh, they said it nowhere or it won't move. That's beautiful. And, and you are basically correct. What you get is you get no net, right? You get no net water movement, right? But you do get water that still moves in both ways at the same time at the same amount. So you get something called dynamic equilibrium that has a symbol like this. So the water is moving exactly the same rate in both directions in and out. And that's called dynamic equilibrium. So you get water that's still moving, but it's moving the exact same rate both ways. And this is called dynamic equilibrium because it's already at equilibrium, right? The system's already happy, but since osmosis naturally happens anyway, it's just gonna happen at the same rate in both directions. Excellent job, guys. Okay. The last beaker, the last beaker, this solution that's outside the cell is called hypotonic. Hypo with an O. Where they're over here, there was hyper, which is different, right? Hyper means more. Hypo means less. So in this case, you have less solutes in the solution. Miss Murdoch? And yes? At the end of this, can you save this document so we can upload it? Yeah, I already told them I would do that, yeah. Oh, oh. I didn't know if you could save it or if I had to screenshot it, but I think you can since you have it in the Word. Yes. Awesome. I love it. It's really nice. I don't, I don't feel like it's the neatest thing I've ever drawn. I think I've done a better job before, but okay. I, I mean, I am will save it. <laughs> it's comparative. Okay. All right. And this is always relative. These words can't be used by themselves. You can only call a solution hypotonic if it's being compared to another solution. Remember that, um, you know, when we're talking about hypotonic or isotonic or hypertonic, you can't use those terms unless you've got uh, a something on the other side of the membrane to compare it to, right? So this solution out here is hypotonic because it has no sugar at all. Um, or, you know, it could just be 0.1 and it would still be called hypotonic because 0.1 would still be less than 0.3. But in this case, can you predict water flow? Will the water flow into the cell or out of the cell this time? Put in the chat or, or open your mic. Let's see what they said. What do you say? Uh, water will flow into the cell. That is correct. You guys are beautiful. Yes, the water will flow in and that will cause the cell to swell and maybe burst. Little red blood cells like ours, we don't have any protection like plant cells do with cell walls. Um, are there more questions coming in? Um, no, no, they're just, they just, they were just, no. They were, okay. most, they were all writing at the same time, so it came in multiple times. Okay, water flows into cell. And the cell will swell, right? Will swell up, will grow, and might burst. Okay. So which one of these three situations would you want in your IV bag connected to your bloodstream if you were in the hospital? What kind of solution would you want in your IV bag? A hypertonic solution, an isotonic solution, or a hypotonic solution compared to your bloodstream? Let's see what they say. ISO. Uh, Pedro yes. and you can Lee say ISO. Yes. Okay. So this one, right? 
this is the one, this is the solution you want in your IV bag. And in fact, there are companies, medical technological companies that manufacture the saline, the saline that goes into IV bags. And there's extremely high quality control and checking to make absolutely sure that the amount of saline salt that is in those bags is exactly the same as the concentration of salt in our blood, in our human blood plasma. So when you put fluids into a person's bloodstream, because a lot of times they'll do that. If you're in the, if you go to the hospital and you've been in an accident or you've experienced some trauma or you've gone through, or, or if you've just gotten out of surgery, they call it fluid therapy and they will put fluids into your bloodstream. And it's a good thing. It's very, it's very therapeutic. It helps your body to recover and it helps, um, it helps your body with stress. Um, but but the solution going in is very important that it be isotonic. If you put a hypertonic solution into someone's bloodstream, what's going to happen to their blood cells? What the if you put a hypertonic solution that has salt in it, they will not explode. Look carefully. Shrink. They will shrink, yes, which is really bad. It's not good for cells to dehydrate all the chemical reactions and things that need to happen inside cells don't happen very well when those cells are shrunken up and dehydrated water is very very important inside cells so that wouldn't be good and if you put a hypotonic solution if you just put pure water into a person's bloodstream then what would happen to red blood cells What would happen? I'm sorry, I can't see the screen. Sorry, they said burst, Ms. Murdoch. If yes, and then they might burst. Right, they might burst. If you put in, you'd have to put an awful lot. There's like eight, seven or eight liters of blood in a person's body. But if you put, you know, a liter of pure water in there, you could do some damage to those red blood cells. So you definitely would. Guys, if you um, please turn on your mics when you say something for a second, because I have a <laughs> tech guy here trying to help us figure out why it keeps going Technicolor. So oh. this will be able to help Ms. Murdoch. So please put it in a voice it. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you there. Now I'm going to go to a worksheet that I uploaded for you that you're going to be doing. You're going to take a little break here, and then we're going to have you do this worksheet. And it's a it, consider it like a small lab assignment, okay? So I'm going to go to this worksheet now. Uh, I, I think I have to share it with you. Hold on. Let me share it with you. You can't see that just so that you have that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay, you should be able to see that, I think, even if it may be glitching. You're gonna open this and you're gonna have a copy of this and this is what you're gonna work on for the rest of class. And it's gonna be a very small lab grade, okay? It's not a big grade, but it is, it's a little bit more than an Ed Puzzle, but much less than your algae lab, okay? but it's important to get it right. So it's gonna be using some of the ideas that I just talked about. <clears throat> so it's really important that you read this first part at the top. So I'm gonna read it with you to help you, okay? It says, in each diagram below, a cell, like these cells down here, I think you can see my, yeah, this, right? This cell here, with a semi-permeable membrane has been placed in a beaker containing substances that are dissolved in water. The membrane is permeable to water and iodine. Okay, let's make sure you understand that. The membrane is permeable to water and iodine. What does that mean? Can you open up your mic and tell me what that means? That this membrane is permeable to water and iodine? What does that mean? I mean, simple English. It can let iodine and water through if it wants to. That's it. Oh, you're so beautiful. Thank you for that. Okay, what that means is that water and iodine can go through this, right? They can go back and forth. Water and iodine can do that. So H2O and iodine are allowed to pass. It is not permeable to glucose. So glucose 
cannot go through the membrane. Wherever it is, it's stuck there. Sodium also, it's not permeable to sodium. Sodium cannot get through and starch also cannot get through. So wherever they start, they cannot move. All right. Remember, I mean, this is just like the, that Ed Puzzle Diffusion Lab that um, it, it uses those same concepts. If starch meets up with iodine, there is that black color that happens. And then the rest of this is just asking questions with each. Let's get rid of that. Oh, come on. There. Um, the rest of this is just asking you questions about uh, the concentrations of things by one, right? Okay, so let's just look at beaker number one for a second, and let me just do the first question with you so you understand how this works. What is the percent of water inside the cell? I'm only going to do this first one with you. What do you think? What is the percent of water inside the cell? So in here, it says 10% glucose. So then what would the water be? If it's 10% glucose, what would the water percentage be? What would you do to make up 100? 90%. So if it's 10% glucose, the rest of it, you can assume that the rest of it is water. I just wanted to give you that bit of guidance so you understood, all right? So I'm giving you this first question. There's the first question. The rest of it, you have to do by yourself, okay? Um, but right now, I want you to take a break. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to play some music. And I want you to... Go away from the screen and take a break, okay? And when you come back, we'll start working on this, all right? <laughs> 